Hi there. Well, what tools do you need to start building a model aeroplane in balsa? This is a question I've seen asked on a couple of forums recently and it set me thinking that I would do a, a short video just showing what I think personally are the basic essential tools that you need. Now, everybody's going to have a view on this and uh, at the end of the video if you want to add something, leave me a list in the comments below of something that you think is, is useful and people will see that as well. So, if somebody's coming into the hobby from the beginning, they're more than likely going to be building a, a kit, a balsa kit, rather than trying to do something from scratch. So, I'm just going to show you what I think are the basic tools to build a simple balsa kit. And I'm going to assume you've got an electric drill, so I'm not going to suggest that or some kind of drill. And I'm not going to talk about covering, you know, covering irons, things like that, because it depends what you're building and what you're going to cover it in, whether it's something like silk span, tissue, uh, heat shrink film. They all require different, uh, different techniques, so I'm going to leave that aside. I'm just talking about building the balsa structure, superstructure if you like. So, let's get on. Now, the first thing you need is something to cut your balsa. Something that you can trim spars to length, uh, take out the tabs on laser cut kits, things like that. Now, I started off in the hobby using this X-Acto knife. Really good, lovely soft handle, nice grip. But I soon moved on to using scalpels, and now I hardly ever use my X-Acto knife, and I just use these two scalpels. It's a number three and a number four handle. These are Swan Morton, and I use, for the number three handle, I primarily use number 10A blades and number 11A, uh, 11 blades, and for the number four handle, I use number 26 blades, which is quite big. I find Swan Morton scalpels will do more or less everything I need to do. Occasionally I use a Stanley knife if it's something really big, but essentially scalpels, they're lovely and sharp, change of blades, they're very cheap. So I would suggest starting out with a scalpel. Just, just a number three scalpel is, is excellent. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing, we're going to need to be measuring things and a really good steel ruler, whether it's one foot, probably better if it's slightly longer, a two foot one. I use um, the Fisher, is a brand I use, made in Japan. They are really, really clear. I, I love these. So I've got a, a few different sizes. So a, a good ruler. And I mean, I use calipers a lot for measuring, even if it's down to the thickness of the balsa. I, I use these. So they can be picked up quite cheaply. We don't need super high accuracy when we're building balsa planes with, with calipers. We're just wanting rough measurements. So I, I would say calipers are useful, but a good rule is essential. Now, I've got this lovely set square here, which is very, very dear to me because it was my, my late father's and he used to be a cabinet maker and used to use this all the time. And I use this all the time now in building, uh, building my planes, whether it's to make sure a fuselage sides are square, ribs are square. So a good set square is, uh, is really useful to have, whether it's got a wooden handle or it's all in steel. Just on that, on that note of making sure things are square, something I use all the time is steel blocks. I have a selection of steel blocks of two different, primarily two different sizes, although I've recently picked up a few kind of random blocks from, from sales. And these have got square edges. So I know that when I'm setting out ribs, if I've got a got my square, square blocks, I can put the rib in between put them together, sometimes I even hold them together with elastic bands, and they help me setting out. So if you can pick up any blocks like this, they are really useful. And if you're gluing something, sometimes you can use them for weights. So, put the blocks over here, done the ruler. Now, talking about cutting again, 
I use this uh, Zonar uh, razor saw. 42 TPI, I would say, is a really good size to go for. Anything with less teeth than that, I think the next one down is something like 35, 38. Is a lip for me, I find is a little bit too coarse. I find the uh, 42 ideal. And these often come with a, a simple um, mitre, um, which is really useful for getting those square edges. And this is aluminium. I always put a piece of plywood in the bottom just so I'm not cutting down onto the aluminium so that it's just protecting that blade a little bit. Still on the cutting, I use a fret saw all the time. Now, if you're building from a kit, you probably won't need to be cutting uh, with a fret saw. I mean, I use this on plywood, anything from two, three mil up to six mil plywood for firewalls, formers, things like that. This is really useful. And I know you can get uh, electric fret saws, but if you're thinking about getting into a hobby and you're wanting to do this on a budget, just until you know whether it's for you, Fret saws are really good. I, I, I really like, uh, like using a fret saw. And I, I would use a hand saw any day in preference to, uh, to an electric saw. It's just, I, I enjoy it. Good set of pins for marking out, for pinning out on plans, whether it's wings, fuselages. I use these uh, small T pins. Don't know whether that shows up. And um, I've also got some really nice stainless steel dressmaking pins with glass heads. And like I say, these are specifically high quality dressmaking pins. And I find them really nice. They, they pin through balls so lovely. And, and they're thinner than the T-pins that you get. So they leave a smaller hole. But selection of both, quite cheap, easy to pick up. I'm not going to be dealing with glue. Glue is a whole minefield of what you prefer and what you like, and there's plenty of videos out there, so I'm not going to be talking about glue. But putting your glue on with a paintbrush, if you're using things like aliphatic resin or PVA, then a paintbrush is very good for application. If you're using CA, you don't need it. But anyway, cheap paintbrush. Now, I use Scotch Magic Tape all the time, whether it's uh, for holding things together, um, whether it's for uh, just sticking on a piece of balsa on the side of a fuselage so that when I put the clamps on, it doesn't damage the fuselage and the, the blocks are there ready. It's, it, magic Tape is really, really useful and it comes off easy without doing any damage. So I would suggest get yourself some magic tape. Really, really good. Now, clamps. I use a couple of different sizes of clamps. Uh, the bigger ones, but I would say the smaller ones are probably much more useful and I use them a lot. Now, if you're in the UK, I picked these up from Wilco. Uh, they were two for a, for a fiver, which, you know, you can't. They are really cheap but they are really, really good clamps. I really like those. And if you're in Wilco picking up some clamps, you can also get these clamps, which are excellent from Wilco, which were a quid, a quid each. It, it's, and I find it's much better to go and actually select your clamps in store because sometimes they're fairly cheaply made and sometimes you find the, the ends don't line up. So you can just sort through and sort out the, uh, the ones for you and I, I've got lots of these little clamps I've probably got about 14 stuck on the back of my bench here I, don't, I think the camera could probably probably see that and I've also got these bigger ones which I picked up from Wilco as well <laughs> these were I'm not I'm not doing an advert for Wilco but the, these were £1.50 which I don't think you can go wrong and they're really really well made so a good selection of, of, of clamps for holding things together while you're gluing it now, final two things, uh, the first one is sanding sticks. There's a lot of sanding in this, in this hobby, and I, I make my own sanding sticks. I get bits of softwood, and I stick on the uh, garnet paper, sandpaper, whatever I require, different grades either side, and I have some longer ones. I've got a, a, a long one here under the bench, 
and I've even got some uh, some round ones. If you want to see how I make these, then have a look in the description of the video below, and there'll be a link to uh, to to a short video showing that. But sounding sticks are brilliant, and. Uh, you know, it's much better than using your fingers, having something on a flat piece of wood. Sometimes you need to use your fingers just holding the paper. But having a having a, a big sanding stick like this when you're doing a leading edge or something is, is or sheeting is is excellent. So sanding sticks. And finally, a plane. I use this on every build I do, mostly with shaping ailerons elevators, leading edges. I could get away with probably sanding it, but this plane is brilliant. And this is a David plane. They're relatively cheap. They're about, I think between 10 and 15, probably 15 pounds sterling. Easily accessible, easily available in, uh, in the UK. I've seen them in the US. The blades are fairly cheap, last quite a while and uh, these are really really good if you have a look in the video below in the description below the video then you'll find a link to uh, a review of these planes and uh, as i say in the review always keep them in a box of uh, balsa like the shavings so you can just plonk them in and it doesn't damage the blade worst thing you can do with these is put them blade down onto a table and if you're going to put them on, then put them on this side so it doesn't damage the blade because the blade protrudes from the bottom of the plane. So these are brilliant, absolutely brilliant and well worth investing in. And actually the final thing, I think I said that was the final thing, but the final thing is a cutting mat. I always cover my bench in a, cover, a cutting mat, big as, I can, big as I can get. And they are great for a building surface. Not for pinning into, for that you need to find something else, whether it's a big piece of foam board. Best thing you can do is have a search on the internet. There's lots of lots of discussion about what you can use as a pinning board. But as a general building board, cutting board, then a, a cutting mat is a great surface. It doesn't dull your blades as much as it would be using uh, cutting down onto the, onto the bench itself and it protects the bench. So get yourself a good cutting mat. And that's it. That is the basic tools. It's probably, I don't know, 10, 12 things that I would recommend. If you're going to start building, you want to see if the hobby's for you, have a, ha have a look at getting some of, some of these tools. And yes, you can get laser cutters and uh, electric fret saws and all manner of, of, of tools to help you, which is great if, if, if that's the way you want to go. But at first, you just want to start nice and simple and see how it goes. So I hope that helps. I hope you found that useful. And uh, if you are coming into the hobby, good luck with your building. And uh, as I said, leave me a comment below if you think I've missed something and you think something else is, uh, is, is really useful. Thanks a lot.